So let's talk about network transparency. Um, there is a definition uh, which the, the vendors in the van optimization area, um, uh, they talk about what, what it means to the branch network. Uh, we believe that that definition does not translate to the inter-data center space. Uh, for inter-data center acceleration, there are a whole slew of requirements that must be in the, in the product to really qualify it as being transparent in the network. And, I, and we can cover all those three. Let me first talk about the requirement that the van optimization vendors talk about. What they're really saying is, uh, when a packet enters a van optimization, optimization device and when it leaves that device, uh, if you were to sniff the two ends, uh, you would not be able to tell the difference. And here's what I mean. So imagine, if you will, there's a link going into some van optimization device. So traffic comes in, traffic goes out. If you were to sniff right here, and if you were to sniff right here, the definition of transparency is that the uh, IP addresses and the ports for the source and destination will be the same. There's a lot of value to this. Um, if you have this in place, um, you know, the customer doesn't have to change any of their NetFlow setup, the QoS doesn't need to change, etc. Et so this is very valuable. Definitely this makes sense and our product does that too. However, this is where one optimization devices stop. That, that's all they do as far as network transparency is concerned. Uh, there's a second very, very important thing that they do not even think about, and that is port to port latencies. If I'm in a branch environment, if my end-to-end -end latency is, let's say, 100, a couple of hundred milliseconds, if end-to-end, -end, if I add, say, 5, 10 milliseconds, it doesn't really matter. But it does in the inter-data center space. And here's what I mean by that. So imagine a packet comes in here, it goes through this box, comes out, what is that time? So if I were to measure the time here and measure the time here, what is this time t? Let's assume for a minute that it's 5 milliseconds. Let's say t is 5 milliseconds. In order for, a, for any request to go from point A to point B, so from a branch to a data center and back, I have to traverse four of these devices because each of these, there's a device on each end of this link. So a packet goes this way, hits another box, comes back, hits another box, and comes back to this box again. So my total incremental latency because of our optimization, assuming say five milliseconds port to port, is actually 20 milliseconds. I mean, this could be, arguably this could be less, let's say even if it's a millisecond, still a lot of, a lot of latency. Here's the issue with this. If my branch is say 200 or so milliseconds away, so if you have if you have a, if you have a large data center in the U.S. and you have a branch say on in Eastern Europe or in China, no problem because your end-to-end latency is 200 300 milliseconds. But if you have data centers, let's say one in, in the New York area and one in say uh, in Illinois, and you have an end-to-end -end latency of say 40 50 milliseconds, this is not acceptable because I added about 20 25 percent on top of my existing latency. I must have designed my replication to work with the existing latency and now I have to deal with this extra 20 milliseconds or so. And by the way, this, this 20, this could be anything. Because this is these, all these van optimization devices, they're software based. So it all kind of depends. Sometimes it's 4, sometimes it's 5, sometimes it's 20. You don't really know. There's no way to have an SLA around what is my latency through this box. It all depends. Uh, if you have a hardware device such as ours, that's not an issue. In our box, packet goes in, packet comes out. T is not going to be more than 50 microseconds. Microseconds, not milliseconds. So T is 50 microseconds. You go both ways. Go in this direction, come back. We will add a worst case latency of 200 microseconds. When you're talking about an actual van, let's say the van is as small as, let's say, 5 milliseconds. 200 milliseconds is nothing. It's a blip. You must have very, very low latencies, port to port latencies, to be considered a transparent device. If you add anything more than that, you're not transparent. Unfortunately, you're not, right? And and that's a big requirement for for uh, you know replication in, in 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 the data center acceleration space. Particularly when doing when you're doing synchronous replication, you know end-to-end -end, uh, budgets for synchronous replications are typically in the four to five millisecond range. If your budget is four to five milliseconds and you're adding five, ten, fifteen, twenty milliseconds, obviously you're not acceptable. In our case, we'll add no more than 200 microseconds, no problem. We can even accelerate synchronous replication. Actually, this is exactly why van optimization vendors, they don't even talk about synchronous replication. They know that they cannot uh, work with it. In fact, they will make it worse. They will break synchronous replication, which is why they don't even talk about it. 
Me on the other hand, if you do happen to have IT based synchronous replication, we can absolutely help you reduce that traffic. So that's how, that's number two. Now, number three, there's a third one which uh, van optimization does not cover, and we do, and that is deployment flexibility. And this is an important one, and here's why. Um, it depends on where you can deploy this box, right? So, so if, if you have to spend, say, a, 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 a few weeks of time or a month or so to figure out where this box is deployed, if this box were to crash um, or, or, or reset or there's a network issue, how much time does it take to figure out what went wrong in the system? If all these things are, are, are things that you're considering and you must, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're any reasonable size organization, you must have thought through these things. Um, if this box is not purely transparent and cannot sit in line with all of your traffic, it's not transparent. If you have to go and build a WCCP policy on your Cisco routers or you have to implement all these policy-based routes on your Cisco router or any router for that matter, it's not transparent. So let me, let me draw a quick diagram to illustrate what I'm saying. So in a classic data center network, Where you have co-routing, van routing going out to the van. If the requirement from a vendor is that, well, you must go and change routing, not transparent. Or if you must go and implement lots of policy-based routes on this box, not transparent. Or if you must have WCCP support on this box for which you must have a particular kind of supervisor on the router, not transparent. The only thing that is transparent is if that box can sit on your trunks, like this. This is the only way you're transparent in this network. This, there's a reason why this kind of this particular kind of deployment is important. Uh, let's say any of these boxes die. Let's say your router crashes. Let's say this switch crashes. Doesn't matter. STP, which you already have in your network, any flare the STP, is designed to find a path out of this network. We, as a, as, as a, as a new device in this network, must work in that, in that framework. So for example, if this link were to die, no problem, our boxes will just kind of figure that out and, and push to the other side. All traffic will just end up on this box. Purely transparent. We work with the existing framework in the network. People have spent 15, 20 years figuring out how STP works, how routing works. If we are coming into your network and if we are requiring that you build a whole new framework just so we can help you in any way, it's not transparent. And that's what we make sure we do not do here at Infinet. So those are the three things, again, um, in order for you to make sure a device is transparent for your data center network, you must make sure that there is uh, IP and portal level transparency through the box. Uh, second, you must make sure that the latency port to port for that device must be very, very low. Ideally, it should be in the tens of microseconds. And number three, deployment must be extremely flexible. They must be able to deploy in line in this network without you requiring, without, without having you do any kind of routing changes, policy changes, etc., etc. Of course, if you do, if you do desire to deploy this box out of path, well, sure, we can do that too. But that's a requirement that you must be looking for in order to make sure you're, you're, you're making the right buying decision for inter-data center acceleration.